Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to visiting lecture today. For everyone who does have entered the room, we are about to begin. So please have a seat and make yourself comfortable. And today's session is being live streamed on Universitas Tecum, Universitas Tecum YouTube channel. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Honorable Associate Professor, Institute of Commerce and Management, University of Science, Pakistan. And a very warm welcome to all participants and students from Stecom University. Is it indeed a pleasure to have all of you on this memorable occasion? I would like to thank God for gathering us here in a visiting lecture program regarding impact of emotional intelligence towards turnover intention of employee in organization. Before we begin, please allow me to read our agenda this afternoon. First, there will be a class presentation by Dr. Sadia Anwar. And finally, there will be a question and answer session after the presentation. And continue with the brief photo session at the end. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, we will start this event today delivered by Dr. Sadia. The time is yours. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Hope you all would be fine. And I'm really very really thankful to the uh, STEM home and everyone to be here and giving me a chance to speak up on the topic that is impact of emotional intelligence towards turnover intention. Actually, nowadays, uh, after specifically after the pandemic, we have seen that the people have got this factor that uh, most of the employees are getting turnover from their concern organization to some other organizations. And among them, uh, in the pandemic, there were most of the things which came in front of us, which have triggered many of the things. Among them, there were one point that is very, very important, which, which should be known by everyone. And that is the emotional intelligence, which everybody was used to have. Once it used to be said that intelligence is that thing that cannot be developed. But now with the passage of time, we are realizing this factor that no, intelligence is a factor that can be managed. And, and hopefully that in this section, in this session, in this presentation, we are going to discuss about all these factors. But before starting, I would like to say that I have uh, managed this presentation in two parts. Number, uh, my first, uh, first, I'm going to discuss about the emotional intelligence that what is it and how it has been uh, developed or, or what kind of things come into the emotional intelligence. And with the passage of time, I will move ahead to the second part of this topic that is turnover intelligence. And with some recommendations, what we can do to manage because among us, we all belong to the management. We all belong to such type of an eras where we need these things that if we know the problem, then there should be a solution. There should be a recommendations. There should be a suggestions that oh, how we can manage if we, are, if we are having a problem, everybody knows about the problem, but it is important that with the problem, we should know about the solution. So in that regard, without uh, wasting much more time, uh, let's start my presentation. Okay. So it's not a new thing that uh, if I say that after pandemic, it has been introduced, no. This emotional intelligence was firstly known was EQ, that was emotional quotient. And this was introduced in 1990s and 1995. It's not like it's a very new thing. It has been reformed just now. No, the people, the doctors, the psychiatrists, the psychologists, they used to tell a normal person, a normal uh, general person that, Everybody has this uh, fact. Everybody can have this emotion among them. A Time magazine cover back in 1995. Sorry. Cover back in 1995, an hours of television coverage used to tell millions of the people who used to watch the television that what do you mean by emotional cutin? Or what, what is your emotional cutin? According to their perception, they used to think that once people will, will get exposures to this thing, they could know about their emotional cute and they wanted to know more. They wanted to know how EQ, that is emotional cute and worked and who had it. I mean, uh, the people used to say that some people are very much uh, emotional, some are not emotional. No, it's not like that. 
everybody has emotions and everybody used to uh, get these emotions, but some show their emotions and some don't show their emotions. Most importantly, people wanted to know if they had it, referred to as emotional student, in, uh, means emotional intelligence student, or nowadays we used to say it simply emotional intelligence. In 1990, the psychologist Peter Solovey and John Mayer published their landmark article. That was on uh, emotional intelligence in the Journal of Imagination, Cognition, and Personality. So it, it, it gives an introduction that particularly this topic has been introduced in 1990s. It's, it's not about this one, but now, uh, particularly after pandemic, it has become a very major cause that everybody should realize what facts can man which, which facts can be managed or how we can uh, develop this factor among us. In 1995, we got Mr. Uh, Dr. Uh, Daniel Goldman, and according to the Go Daniel Goldman, he was the person who has been recognized, who introduced the emotional intelligence or emotional filter to the world. He was a psychologist, and he has particularly given a concept about the emotional intelligence in his publications in the New York uh, Times Sciences in which he described uh, how it can be managed, how it can be developed, what factors, what are the variables or what are the factors that develop some emotional intelligence, because it is not necessary, everybody should have everything, means all factors of the emotional intelligence, all factors of the uh, emotional uh, intelligence can be managed in just one personality. As we all know that every person is different from the other person, every personality has their own domains, every personality has their own uh, pros and cons. So in that regard, emotional intelligence varies person to person. Now, particularly, what do we mean by emotional intelligence? Uh, doctors Travis Bradbury uh, and Jane Graves describe that emotional intelligence means your ability to recognize and understand your emotions, means whatever you are feeling, and your ability to use this awareness to manage your behavior and the relationships with your relationship with others. It is particularly when you know about yourself, it is particularly when you understand about yourself that how, you are, how your emotions are triggering, what, what are the things that makes you happy, that makes you sad, that makes you that makes you to be in anger. What are the factors, how you manage them, how you get an awareness that I am not liking this factor or this thing. If sometimes it happens that in at our workplace particularly or in, sometimes in our home, uh, there are many things which we don't like. Even then, we manage our behavior. We don't misbehave with our with our elder ones, particularly with our with our parents. Or we should be uh, asked to be remain polite or kind to our kinders, means to our younger ones. So this is what the emotional intelligence is. Wherever any person is, that either he is at workplace or either he is at at the at the home they should manage their, their behaviors, their relationships. To understand all these things, to recognize all these things can be known as uh, emotional intelligence. Now, what is the difference between IQ and emotional intelligence? IQ was, uh, people used to think that if, uh, what, what is the difference between, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, my IQ level is so high, so I'm emotional? No, it is not necessary. IQ score is derived from the standards to design the, to measure the intelligence. IQ can tell, uh, can inform you about the, your intellectual abilities, like how well you learn, understand, and apply those information. People with higher IQs can think abstractly and make mental connections more easily. I mean, they know how intelligently they can work, they can solve their, for example, for a student, if they can solve their math, maths problem, they become, if they, they, they feel that their IQ level is very high, no doubt, they are securing A grades, they are securing high grades in their, in their uh, main studies, and the people who are working, they are, they are managing their accounts very nicely, that doesn't mean that they are emotionally intelligent as well. It means they are, in, I mean, they are intelligent enough to know about the performance, to know about the abilities to do their work. But emotional intelligence, when we talk about emotional intelligence, emotional intelligence is using emotions to think and enhance our reasoning. Why we are doing this? 
why we are learning this, why we are understanding this, what, what we will gain. Will this be beneficial for us or not? Those with high emotional intelligence are able to manage their emotions as well as use their emotions to facilitate their thinking and understand the emotions of others. The thing is that when we are talking about an emotional intelligence, we are talking, talking about the whole society. We are talking about the whole era around us. But when we are talking about intelligence student uh, or an intelligence of a particular person, we are just talking about that particular person. If you are not having the emotional intelligence, then you won't be able to manage yourself around the people you are. Uh, sometimes you used to see some of the people, they used to be so quiet, so calm. They don't get anger, angry. They don't get into this factor. They don't show their any emotion, but they are damn intelligent. That means that intelligence is something different and being emotionally intelligent is something very different. What are emotional students uh, and how emotional students is uh, considered as a key part of the whole person? Now, there are three things, basically. One is your intelligence student. Second one is your emotional student. And the third one, these both, when connected, they make your personality. The expertise, when you show your expertise, that is called emotional, uh, sorry, intelligence student. Means you are, you are having a great expertise in your accounts. You are having a great expertise in your management skills. You are having great expertise in your, in your studies or in whatever area you are having. Because at this moment, I'm talking to the students as well as the administration or whosoever is there in this presentation. So this is beneficial for everyone. It is not only for the students, but it is not for the administration. Because today, who is sitting on the seat of a student, so tomorrow you will be at the, at the seat of some administration. So you must know how to manage your expertise. You must know what are you. So being with this factor that expertise are the intellect, when you are having intelligence built in, you know about your expertise, that what you bring to the work, what, what you are working for, what are your, what is the nature of your work, what is the nature of your job. Then comes with personality, personality, who you are at work. When you are at work, you are a very different person. You are at home, you are a very different person. You are with your parents, you are a very different person. So this is very important that you must know who you are at the workplace. Though the emotional cuten, the emotional intelligence or the emotional cuten, how you make the most of both your expertise and personality together, how you manage yourself, how you show your expertise, how you make other people realize how much intelligent you are, you are, or how much how much you can bring the benefits to to the other persons as well, to yourself, along with the society, along with the people around you, along with the organizations in which you are working. Why it is important? Why emotional intelligence is the strongest predictor of workplace performance? 90% of top performance have high level of emotional intelligence. You should uh, realize this thing when, when you, uh, we used to say that the people who are having the, it's simple example, that a, a fruitful tree will always be very much down to earth. It, it, its fruits are so heavy, they used to be to the down to the earth. So when you are having a great emotional intelligence, 90% of the top performance are being found that they used to have a high emotional intelligence and the way they perform because they know how to manage their anger. They know how to perform themselves and how to make other people to perform in the best way. People with average IQs outperform those with the highest IQs of 70% of the time. Sometimes it is that uh, performance depends on how you're managing the things. Over there, your emotional intelligence is not that much important, but your emotional intelligence works. Sometimes you have to handle the situation over there. If they were, if your emotions are required, not only your intelligence. Decades of rush, uh, researchers have now pointed to emotional intelligence as being the critical factor that sets star performers apart from the rest of the pack. The people who are having a high level of emotional intelligence, they are very much committed, they are very much loyal. And the researchers have, uh, from decades, it's about to be three to four decades, that it has been seen that the people with the high emotional intelligence, they are uh, giving the best performances and they are being found different from the other personalities. 
when we are talking about this factor that people or top for performance, when we are talking about top performance means we are performers, we are talking about the top level management. And we know that they always, uh, whenever we talk about you know, management, we talk about a uh, hierarchy, management hierarchy. And in that management hierarchy, we used to have three management parts, the lower management, the middle management, and the top level, level management. It's a relationship among two people. It's a relationship between a leader and its employee. If you are working on in the lower middle level manager, means if you are in a lower middle management, then the middle level manager is your boss, is your is your leader. He will lead you. And when you are working on the middle one, then the top level managers are your bosses, your leaders. So in, the, in this regard, it is very much important to know about this relationship that how leaders uh, or their components or the personalities can manage all these facts how they can impact or how their emotional intelligence can be so much triggering the performances of the employees. Now, talking about a leadership, leaders are the personalities who lead you, who tell you how to work, how to move on. Particularly in the leadership, we used to found three major skills that the leaders should have three major skills. Previously, they used to have uh, two major skills, but now we have uh, identified with this factor that no, they must have three different uh, skills. Number one, the technical skills, which is the most important. You must, the, uh, the leaders should know about their business planning. They must know whatever the performance in which organization they are, even if they are in the medical sector or in educational sector or in, in the manufacturing sector or in a business sector, wherever they are. They know about their plans. They know about how to plan, what to do, and where to do. Along with the product knowledge, if in the medical sector, they must know that what type of doctors we require, uh, what type of diseases are nowadays moving on, or what type of uh, patients we are receiving and what type of uh, doctors we are required. So in that regard, again, in education sector, what type of educations are required? As we know that now, uh, the technological transformation has reached. So we need uh, teachers with the technological uh, information and the technological things. So they must have a product knowledge with the computer skills. This all skills makes a technical skills. This is a one part of any of the leader. Moving with the second part, that technical skills along with the cognitive skills. In the cognitive skills, we used to see two major things, that is analytical reasoning and strategic thinking. When we are talking about an analytical reasoning, just would like to explain that analytically, critically, we used to reasoning that if something has been happening in, a, in the organization or at the workplace or in the, in the class or wherever you are, why this has been happening? Why, why this, this uh, action has been taken up? What are the reasons behind this one? and a strategic thinking that once this part will be done, then second part, then third part, then they, they make in strategies, they make a policies. The combina combination of this analytical reasoning and strategic thinking develops a cognitive skill in, in any of the lever. But with the passage of that, it has been said that emotional intelligence proved to be twice as important as the others for job at all levels. It doesn't matter that you belong to the lower or you belong to the middle class, uh, level managers or you belong to the top level managers, whosoever is, emotional intelligence is the most important factor that you must have when you are talking about or when you are, I mean, when you are dealing with this factor. Now, with effective, when we are not now in this, in this moment, when we are talking about an effective leadership, we are talking about the technical skills with the combination of cognitive skills with the combination of emotional intelligence. It is something like that, that you are planning something and you know about the reasons behind that problem, that your employees are suffering with that problem. And then you realize is that, okay, I have to make this a strategy. I have to make this policy in my organization. And you cannot deal with your, with you cannot communicate with your, employees you are not emotionally strong enough to 
control your anger or control your emotions or control the emotions of your colleagues because it is very normal when the employees don't get satisfied they become angry they they it comes out with different biasness so your emotional intelligence is not knowing about your own emotions but it is knowing about the emotions of the other people as well so it is very much important that you must realize with this factor that if you want to be a, to have an effective leadership in your in your whole era it is very much important that you must know about all these facts a leader's intelligence has to be strong emotional uh, means you, it should be having an emotional components he must have high levels of self awareness maturity and self control it should not be like this that one should be means feeling like okay it's okay i'm short tempered person but i can be a leader no if you want to be a leader it is very much more important that your emotions should be properly managed what is emotional intelligence emotional intelligence is utilize your emotion to determine the right person right response right time it is very much important that you must have a right person to whom you are communicating your response should be right and this you can only identify when you you know about your emotions when you know about the things when you know that to whom you are speaking it is something like that we used to say we should not share everything with everyone we generally used to say this isn't it we used to say that we should not uh, say i mean we should not share every secret with everyone why used to say this why are the ancient and people used to say this that don't share your secrets with everyone because if the secret is uh, you cannot keep your secret with yourself nobody is going to keep your secret it is something like that this is an emotional intelligence that don't share everything with everyone and you used to do in, in your normal life you don't share everything with everyone emotional intelligence is not just being nice again sometimes you have to show the anger to your employees if they are not working properly you have to show their anger but it should be in a managed way suppressing emotions is not emotional intelligence that you are keeping your anger inside you you are making yourself uh, like you are getting into a depression and you are keeping all the things in your mind and making your uh, your your brain like that does mean and keeping all the things in that no it's not important giving free rein to emotions again it should not be like this it is very much important that you must have a balance sometimes you used to say that it's okay i am nice to everyone it's it's wrong it's it cannot be you cannot be nice to everyone attempting to be a robot you are coming to the job you are not saying hi hello to everyone you are not smiling you are not kissing uh, uh, giving any emotion to anyone you are passive all the time you cannot be if you are doing so then they 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 should be a fact that it is very much important that you must realize that um it's a time that you should realize that what particularly emotional intelligence is is it possible to make a decision without emotion what people used to think that we can make the decisions without the emotions again it is a question that emotionally if you are uh, emotion I means if you are if you are uh, not having the emotions you can take the good decisions no sometimes you have to be emotional when pandemic came it was the biggest biggest event that has every person in the world has been suffered with that with that with that situation the covid was taking the lives of our beloved one we were so much in a depression and at that time we were we, we were everyone was emotional and we were taking all the decision, decisions on the emotional factors we we have to be in quarantine we have to leave all our social activities we have to be alone and over there we are we all become emotional at one moment that either we should move on or we should be stay on in this thing and then the strategies make up we didn't stop we became emotional but we didn't stop we move on with the online sessions we move on with the with the different factors and the things being quarantined being alone 
we started working with everyone. Reason without emotion is neurologically impossible. Uh, it is something like this is there is a reason. There is a reason. Your emotions makes you different from an animal. You an animal. What's the difference? If you hit them, they will shout. And if someone hurt you, you will shout. Then what's the difference in between an, an animal and a human? These emotions, these reasonings, they make you human. They make you a person, how you behave. Emotions have taught mankind to reasoning. It's the emotions who give reason a mankind. If you are hungry, it's an emotion. You want to eat something. You are feeling down. You are not feeling good. You feeling angry. But you cannot react in front of the elder ones because they are elder. It's not ethics. This is not morality. Now this is reasoning. So emotions have given you a way to bring up. The decades has been passed up. The people we used to live uh, early, now they, they uh, now we are having a different situations. Now we are living in a different uh, scenario. We now we are having a different, different facts. So this mankind, how we have become a human, how we are recognized as a human, these are emotions we have taught us. Now, bit scientifically, if we see, that is our brain. The how brain reacts or how emotional intelligence creates a balance in between your rational as well as emotional brain. This is the most beautiful thing we must know. Our brain is made up of uh, three stages. One is neocortex, the reason which generates the reasoning, the limbic system which makes your emotions and the reptilian complex that behaves, that instincts, that tells you. Particularly, we behave based on the reptilian brain. Whatever they, they give us the instructions, we used to work on. Now, in the reptilian part, what, what happens? It, the uh, heart rate, the breathing, the balancing, the compulsive behaviors. As we drink, we eat, we breathe. This is all compulsive behaviors. And this is very normal that comes into the reptilian brain. When we talk about the limbic brain, what happens here? Your emotions, the memories of your emotions, your birthday parties, uh, your graduations, your leaving your schools, you are entering first time to your school, the value judgments, someone behave very wrong with you and you didn't, go with the compulsion that, okay, somebody has done wrong with you and you're going to do, do wrong with them. There's value judgments. The gut feelings. Sometimes we used to behave wrongly and then we feel that we should say sorry to some friend. This all things comes uh, in the limbic brain. The third one, that is the most important, but it remains very silent. That is the neocortex. What happens there in that part of your brain? the language, abstract thoughts. When you get relaxed, you remind some of the factors, you realize, oh, this happened, had happened, tomorrow I will do this. Or if I will plan like this, I will, I will manage my assignments in this way. Your imaginations, your consciousness. This all, all happens in your neurocortis uh, part of your brain. 95% of decisions are being made here in, in your neocortex. You make your 95% decisions. We used to say we were conscious and we were we were acting. No. It is something that we used to make in, in, in our neocortex and then it applic ap means it, it comes to the limbic system and then it comes to the reptilian. The subconscious thought describes the fast processing the emotion driven, cares about care. Secondly, the logical conscious thought, slow and effortless, future focus, not a primary driver of decision making. 
in the in the first two parts, so tail in brain and limbic brain gives you 95% of the decisions that you have already made. But when you have made this, you, this you have made in unconsciously in your non-cortex uh, uh, part of your brain. Emotions are the driving force behind the decision-making process. Even scientifically, we can say this point. That if, if somebody says you that how emotions can manage, you can show this. You can tell them that it has been scientifically proved that our brain gives a very, a very a great responses to the emotions. It gives, uh, when you are emotionally uh, not good, you are having some something bad hap happen uh, in your life. You are emotionally not good. You don't feel good. You don't feel happy. You don't feel committed. You don't feel motivated. But if something good happens in your life, you become like, oh, wow. Everything would look good. So sound, so, so smooth, so nice. So these are the things that one should realize that how emotions can be. It's not about a research. It's not about the psychology. It's not about psychiatrists. It's about how God has made all these things in our brain. Good news. <laughs> emotional intelligence can be developed. Firstly, the people used to say this, that uh, uh, emotional intelligence uh, are natural. They cannot be developed. But with the passage of time, it has been realized that no, this can be developed. And this, this has been developed. People feel before they think and act. It's possible to change people's responses to feelings. Nowadays, we are giving different trainings to the different people in this regard that you must realize how you are behaving. What are the behaviors? How you are behaving in front of other people. It's possible to change people's response to feelings. These changes have a positive impact on individual as well as team. New behavior improves job performances. If somebody is getting angry, we can give them a part. We can give them that, that thing that they can behave in a best way. Your emotions trigger or gives you a way towards your thoughts. And your thoughts gives, uh, make you or train you to do the, your behaviors. And with the, that behavior, you move on with the performances. This is how uh, our, our work. I mean, whatever profession you are, this is a general concept. This is for everyone. It, it, is, it is not, we, I'm not talking about just for the students. I'm not talking about the management. We are not talking about, this is for everyone. This is for the medical sciences. This is for the social sciences, everyone. It is about every person, particular person. In whatever you, job is, you are in, it is very much important how you are controlling your emotions. In leadership, the hard stuff is easy. It's the soft stuff that's hard. The hard stuff is easy, according to Tom Peters, that sometimes if, if, if for example, if you, do, if you want to do the paperwork, that's very easy. You can do it very nicely. You can perform your assignments, you can complete your assignments, you can complete your hard stuff in a very easy way. You can uh, construct a building. You can do any hard thing, hard stuff in a very easy way. But the stuff is the st soft stuff. That's hard. Now, what soft stuff over here is? Soft stuff is the emotion of your employees. If something bad has been happening in the life of your employee, for example, they they are ill, or the, anybody of their family is ill, and they are not feeling good. They need some some financial help. And they can't see you. And if you are not emotional, good, you cannot understand. Then again, you will feel this factor that, oh, how you're going to manage it. Means it is very much important that this soft stuff, that emotion, that is an indication of the emotions, that's hard to be deal. And that is the most important thing that an employee should have, that the leaders should have. They must realize this factor. Emotional intelligence is the foundation for critical skills, according again with the doctors uh, Brad Berry and Jean Graves. They used to say that emotional intelligence is a package of your time management, decision making, 
change tolerance, communication, teamwork, empathy, presentation skills, social skills, customer service, flexibility, accountability. And these all things come into the, into the tree of your one thing that is emotional intelligence. Accounts to almost 60% uh, of success at work. People with high emotional acuity on average makes approximately $29,000 but more per year. But on the other way, 90% of the top performance are having high level of emotional acuity as I have discussed. And 20% of bottom performers are high in emotional acuity. Means if you are if you are having a great emotional intelligence, you can perform in a best way. You can have much and much much. You can get much than what you think. Now, what particularly emotional intelligence is composed of, or how it it works? There are two factors, as I've said. You, it's a personal and it's a social. When we talk about a personal one. We are talking about us. Uh, and whatever the actions we are going to take, these actions will obviously react to the social factor. Personally, what I see is the self-awareness. Okay, I know I'm having these drawbacks. I know I'm, I'm not good in my anger, controlling in my anger. I'm not good uh, or I'm having this, because every every person, person has different perceptives. For someone is openness to experience. He loves to, he's very, very great to take new exposures to new experiences. But someone, they say, no, I'm, I'm good enough with my own, this square. I don't want to get out of this, my own um, comfort zone. So this is self-awareness, when you're knowing about yourself. And second point is the self-management. When you know about yourself, how you manage yourself. You know, you're not good in managing your anger. So how you're controlling that? This is self-management. But when we come about the social competence, the leaders, the top levels, they should have the social awareness, how their society has been working on. They must aware of their effect, what the people around them, how they are managing them, how, how this, this factor has been managing along with the relationship management. That how this society or, or in the workplace, they are working, the organization they are working, how this relationship can be managed, how this can be managed. Now, this is a combination of personal to the social. How much personally you are competent to manage yourself and how much socially you are competent to manage the relationship of yours with the other. How you are making the other to do the work for you how you're managing uh, the other to be with you. Now, coming with this one, that self-awareness is uh, an intros, uh, intros, introspective. Self-awareness, the ability to recognize and understand your moods, emotions, and drives, as well as their effects on the others. The hallmarks are self-confidence, realistic self-assessment, self depreciating sense of humor. That, okay, I know about myself. This is self-awareness. I know my mood swings. I know what, what triggers my anger. I know uh, what are the things that I should not speak up in this, in this person, but I should not say in front of this. Or I... Nah, bagi para peserta mohon ditunggu terlebih dahulu karena dokter 
dokter sedianya lagi ada technical issue ini lagi join zoom reconnect to zoom just a moment thank you Hmm. Sorry for the inconvenience. I hope Novita, uh, am I audible? Yes. Uh, I'm really sorry for the some technical issue had happened. So we'll be back. Okay. Was talking about this self awareness. That you must be self-aware of your of your facts. This is the base part of your of yourself that you must know about your uh, self-awareness. Moving ahead, increase your self-awareness. People struggle to see themselves as others see them. The best way to find out what others see is to ask them. Asking for feedback is easy. Hearing it without getting defensive is not. Means. Get interacted with the people. Ask them. Sometimes, whatever the people perceive is not important. They, that is important for you. What people think is uh, is important for your factor. Don't wait. It's much less painful. Seek out this information on your own. That wait, wait until someone bring it, bring it into your attention. Sometimes I used to feel the people feel so much uh, demotivated. They don't like to work. They feel themselves depressed. And I used to ask them, why are you feeling so depressed? This was, there is nothing motivational. Nobody has come to motivate you. It's you who has to be motivated. Set your goals. What are your goals for improving your emotional intelligence? Go for the trainings. Go for the walk. Go for the, meet with th those people. Uh, seek out a trusted friend or a colleague. For the best feedback, discuss with them, make a bonding, make them that they will be someone who, whom you can work through these moments comfortably. They can tell you that, uh, yes, you can be with this factor, you should not, you should change yourself, or you should be, uh, uh, these things are wrong in you, you must work on these factors. Be ask, ask such type of people. Don't ask everyone because everyone is your, not your friend. Sometimes your your people are working around you. They are just your colleagues. They are not your friends. So seek out a trusted person to whom you can trust you, to whom you can tell what, whatever you are feeling. Ask the questions. Are there specific situations where or people with whom I tend to let me emotions get the best of me? Names. If I tell everyone I'm feel I'm happy, so everybody will feel happy. No, nobody cares. 
If you are happy, your friends, your family will feel good. Oh, you are happy? Why you are happy? They will ask. If you say someone unknown, or even to, you will tell your boss that I'm happy, your boss will say, okay, why I should be happy? Is there anyone I do too much? That is, can I tone down a certain behavior? May, again, this is what you must ask from your own self. What holds me back from managing my emotions effectively? Why I cannot perform as I want to? What are the emotions that makes me low? What are the things that makes me, that create, that extract of me back? Why I'm going up back? Why I'm not moving uh, further? Why I'm not forward? So what are the strategies? Because I always say that when there is a problem, there is a solution. If you find out that you are feeling all these questions in your mind, then what are your strategies? You should observe the ripple effect from your emotions. What are what are the uh, behaviors? What are how when I behave, when I speak up, when I when I act? What are the reactions? Visit your values. Check yourself. Know who and what pushes your buttons. Stop and ask yourself why you do the things you do. Seek for the feedbacks. Okay, if I've done this thing, what happened? If I've performed in this way. What are the feedbacks? Okay, I should I should continue with this factor. I'm a good presenter. I'm not a good presenter. I'm a good speaker. I'm not a good speaker. I can uh, I can be a good leader. I can lead this assignment with my colleagues. Okay, good enough. Don't be much more judgmental. Now, with the self awareness, we have self management. The so self management is proactive. Self awareness, you're in you, that's something you know. When you know about your inner self, you have to move ahead with the management. The ability to control or redirect impulsive and mood. I mean, whatever the distinct impulses and moods you are having. The propensity to suspend judgment, to think before acting. You make yourself. The hallmarks are trust, trustworthiness and integrity, comfort with ambiguity, openness to change. Okay, fine. If I've done something wrong, next time I'm not going to do this. If I've made this assignment wrong, next time I won't do this. Next time I will I will work in this way. I will change my strategy in learning this thing. If in exams I have failed, okay, I will change my strategy to learn. The self-management tip. An uncontrolled emotions outburst, even though it may make you feel better temporarily can do major harm to your relationships. Sometimes we just burst out in front of a boss, in front of a teacher, in front of our colleagues, in front of our friends, without thinking that what this, at that time we will feel good, but with the passage of time, we will get the gut feelings. We will say, oh my God, what I have done? I must say sorry. When your, when your relationships are not voluntary, such as with your colleague at work, Minimizing this type of damage is essential to the health and productivity of your relationship. If your colleague is someone who, who is with you, but again, it, it there's always a label where, where everybody is going to um, I mean they are going to make they, they are going to accept you. Your every moment is not acceptable everywhere. So you have to be very much conscious when you are dealing with anyone. That is self-management. Now, self-management strategies comes up with take control of your self-talk. When you're talking to yourself, when you're deciding, when you are thinking, you are saying that I will do this and this and this, you must know. Manage yourself, count to 10. Sometimes people used to say, I don't know how to manage myself. Sometimes it is important to change your mind. Get out from that situation. Whatever has you triggered you up. Come to 10. Smile and laugh more. Okay, cool. Leave it. Learn a valuable lesson from everyone you encounter. We are human beings. We are not angels. We will make mistakes. But when how we will make, become a good person or a good human, then we are going to learn from our mistakes, whatever the mistakes we have done, we have done. So it is very much important that you must know about yourself and you should encounter, you should learn the valuable lessons from whatever you have, I mean, uh, again, whatever you have done. 
Now, from your personality, it comes to the social awareness, introspective, self-awareness, the ability to understand the emotion of the people you deal with. The hallmarks are empathy, organizational awareness, service orientation, how to do the work. What is the nature of your work? You have to control your emotions. You are a marketing manager, so you have to make the strategies. You have to capture the customer. You are having a store. You are you are a cashier. You have to be all the time smiling, though. Uh, it's a very uh, the the part of a cashier is very very critical. It's about the money. The the things we deal with the money. It's very critical. So you have to know about to whom you are interacting. Walking their shoes. Your ability to recognize and understand others' opinion and the emotions that come with them is critical to the quality of your relationship. Put yourself in the other person's shoes. Be at, the, at their position. Think how they will. They are thinking. Think if this happens to you, what you will do. Take the time to really understand his or her point of view. Whether you agree with it or not. Sometimes you say, uh, if I would be on his place, I will do this. <laughs> you are not in, in, at their places. You cannot do what they want. Listen. Good listeners don't assure they know or understand everything. They listen, look for the fact of the situation, and then analyze the emotions surrounding it. It is very much important that you should be a good listener. Cues. Improve your read on others' emotional cues. Seek out trusted uh, friends or colleagues to help you. Nonverbal. Always be aware of your nonverbal, facial expressions, tone or voice, body language, gestures. Nonverbal. Somebody, uh, if you're expressing something, you're saying something. What are the expressions you're getting around you? What are the gestures you're getting around you? Checking. Tell them your perception of what they are going through and see if it is accurate. Don't be afraid to ask the kinds of questions you really can't ask during a typical conversation. Finally, ask them if they were attempting to deliver any unspoken messages. Sometimes people just don't want to say flat out how they feel about something, so they drop hints. If they did, this is a great opportunity to see if you picked up on them or not. It is not important that everybody will say you that you are good or not. They will sometimes give you just a gesture. They are just going to give you sometimes just non uh, nonverbal gestures. Their body languages, their tone, their voice, that they want to be with you or not. So it is very much important that if you are getting all these facts, you can develop your, your emotional intelligence. Now, what can be the strategies that can be taken up with the social awareness? That is, greet people by name. This will create a social uh, thing. That hi, Sadia, how are you? Is everything going good? This will create a, a, a strategy. This will give, give a social awareness that oh, I have been recognized by someone. Watch body language. Live in that moment. Practice the art of listening. A step into their shoes. Try to think that if I would be at this situation, but I could have behaved, or if someone is behaving like odd, why this person has been behaving like odd? Think. Now the relationship management, the most important one, that is the proactive again. So what do you mean by pro, uh, relationship management? Proficiency in managing relationships and building networks and ability to find common ground and build rapport. The hallmarks are effectiveness in leading change, persuasiveness, service orientation, because it is belonging to the services. It is belonging to the social society, so, so social relationships. So it is very much important that you must know about how to manage your relationship. Now, there's a tip uh, that remember that emotions play a very important role you have with another person, whether you are aware of them or not. Emotions often influence the back and forth between two people more than the words being said. The ability to spot emotion is the mindset of an interaction, understand their influences, and respond effectively is the essence of relationship management. This can be very hard to do. 
Recognize the emotions of yours as well as the others. Recognize your mistake. Make a repair by acknowledging your mistake. Saying sorry is a very difficult part. Many, many of us, we cannot say sorry all the time. It's very really the most difficult part in our life is to say sorry to someone to whom we have hurt. And when we realize this fact that, oh, we have done this mistake, we have hurted someone. This is the most, most, most uh, odd feeling. Show empathy and be earnest. But then the strategies you can apply in the relationship management. Be open and curious. Be very much curious while you're speaking up. Take feedback well. Build trust. Knowledge of other person's feelings. Take a tough conversation. Remember the little things that pack a punch. As I've said sometime, it is very much important to realize that, yes, we had made a mistake. And it is, it is a time that we must say sorry. This is the most important thing. So one must realize this fact. Increase your emotional intelligence. Research shows that people improve their emotional intelligence most when the following conditions are present. Number one, they have a strong motivation to learn or change. They practice new behaviors consistently. If you're going for a new job, you get into the emotions, you get into the, you are very happy and you must realize, yes, I cannot work here with the same behavior I was doing work at the back. They seek feedback on their own behaviors. If you want to be a good emotional and you find yourself a good emotional intelligent person, then it is very much important that must you must know about the feedback. Now, this is a bit about emotional intelligence and job titles. Uh, the highest title you can see that the managers, they have the 77% impact and their scores of emotional intelligence are 77%. And supervisors, they are having 76% and so on. The action plan. Pick an uh, emotional intelligence skill to work on. What you're feeling, that you're, you are not good in your awareness or you're not good in social management, uh, relationship management, you are not good even in your social skills, you are not good even, what are the factors? Pick three strategies to being using for your chosen skill. If you're not good in your social skills, you're not good with your social relationships, you're not good with your social awareness or social management, your self-awareness uh, and self-management, pick one thing and make three strategies. Choose your emotional intelligence mentor. If you are thinking that your teacher is, wow, emotionally so strong, make them a mentor. Your boss, your colleague, your friend, your, your, your siblings, anyone, anyone. Keep the following in mind as you apply. Expect success, not perfection. Nobody is perfect. Please, mind this thing always. You, are, you cannot be the perfect one. You are human, as I've said. We are human. We will make mistakes. Practice, practice, and practice. Be patient. Measure your progress. Whatever the progress you have done. Have you changed yourself? Are people realizing that you have changed yourself? Uh, what, uh, what drawbacks you have felt and now what you are feeling? This is the most important thing. Now, this is again that how you deal with the uh, IQ levels and your emotional intelligence appears means you are your intelligence quotient are important means higher, but you are not emotionally good. Then again, they will make a disbalances. In order to be successful and fulfilled nowadays, you must learn to maximize your emotional quotient skills, your emotional intelligence skills. For those who blend reason and please feeling, achieve the greatest results. It was once we used to say that emotional intelligence was not important, but nowadays we are moving ahead that yes, emotional intelligence is important. Now the second part of this presentation that is the most important, that when you are having this all emotional intelligence, if you are not having this emotional intelligence, the worst thing that we are facing at this moment, we are facing, the administrative side are facing, are the employee turnovers. And some of you might be, you can be an employee as well. So you are facing this factor. Employee turnover is the movement of members ac across the boundary of an organization. 
they want to turn over, they want to leave your your company, your organization. You can manage it that how many people are leaving each year. Turnover is equal to number of the staff leaving per year. You can get how much people, how many people are getting this one. Now we are having different classifications of turnover, like functional, dice functional turnover, avoidable and unavoidable turnover, voluntarily and non-voluntarily non turnover. It is not important that people use to do the turnover by themselves. Sometimes it is functional, sometimes it's unavoidable, sometimes it's avoidable, sometimes it's voluntarily, or sometimes that is unvoluntarily. Now, when we are talking about a functional retention or functional uh, turnover, desirable employees remain with organizations. I mean, they remain with you. They don't. They will not leave you. That's an employee choice. No intention to leave it voluntarily. That is functional retention. You want to be with you. You have a loyalty. You have a commitment with the organization. You cannot leave this organization because it might be you are the board of directors. Might be you have remained in 20 years in this organization and you have got such a commitment that you can you feel this organization is your own home, you cannot leave it. This is emotions. If you are having this emotion with your organization, you cannot leave it. Or if there's function, functional uh, feelings are there, like undesirable employee remains with organization. Okay, I'm good enough. I got the job. I'm, I'm happy with it. They don't have any emotions. They just, okay, okay, I'm, I'm here. Doesn't matter. No any reason. Intention to leave voluntarily. Desirable employees goods. Now, this is guys functional turnover. The desires of an employee. They can be extrinsic. They can be intrinsic. They can be anything. That, that, that gives you a high performance. But if your desires uh, undesirable employees quits, like they are not working, they are not, they are having low performances, they are not working accordingly, they are not giving what your organizations are, that comes with the undesirable employee quits. That's a voluntary, okay. You cannot really work here because you are not performing the way we want. An involuntary turnover, turnover initiated by the organization, often among people who would prefer to stay means you it's it's upon you we want to be with the hair you don't want to be there involuntary turnover organizations will say that if you will work here we are we are happy if you want to leave okay it's okay if you are getting much good uh, salary somewhere else you can go ahead because we know that pandemic or, or any situation with the passage of time we can see the economy of every country is getting like this everybody wants a chances to move on the most important thing is your self-actualization. When you know that, yes, you deserve much better than this one and you get a good opportunity, you move on. Voluntary turnover. Turnover initiated by employees. I feel that I am happy where am I working or I feel that, no, I want something better than this one and I want a chances. I want to explore much more. That's a voluntary turnover. Consequences of employee turnover. They can be negative as well as they can be positive. The negative consequences will be recruitment and selection. Means if you uh, your employer has, is going to leave your organization, obviously you are going to recruit someone and you are going to select some, and that that will that's a costing them. The advertisement cost, the interview cost, the TADAs, and the rest of the thing. Then you are training and development costs. Obviously, the new person is coming to your organization. You have to train them. You have to develop their skills. Operational disruptions. If someone is working from the last five years, they know how to work, how to deal with the situation. But if someone new will come into entering your organization, obviously your organization will be suffered. Demoralization of organizational membership. The people, it's a normal factor we used to see all around that the people used to say that, uh, okay, why you have left this organization? Oh, this organization is not good. It's not about an organization. It's about the opportunity, but people don't think, they don't understand that why a person is leaving this organization. Sometimes it demoralizes the organizational, the goodwill of organization. However, sometimes it gives a positive consequences like increased performances, 
reduction of intrinsic uh, conflicts. Like for example, if someone is not performing, someone performs performance is very low, you change the employee, the turnover gives a better option to your organization. The entrenched uh, conflicts like you 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 are not you are not having a good relationship with your employee your employee is disloyal to your company to your organization he is a, he used to uh, he, he used to do a proactive behaviors or he is having something like like fraudulence so it's better to leave those personalities increase mobility and morale it is not always leaving some place is something bad or something negative. Sometimes it gives you a positive impact as well. Innovation and adaptation. When new person will come to your organization, you will get a new uh, things. You will get a new ideas, innovative ideas, new strategies, new policies, new adaptations. And in the same way, when you are going to someone uh, somewhere else, you can learn many of the things. You get the innovative ideas. The reasons why an employee leaves an organization or the reasons behind the turnover. The organizations you should know that they can be the monetary factors, lack of good working condition, no flexible work schedule. Sometimes we have seen that on weekends, Saturdays, Sundays, the people are not having the holidays. They have to work, work, and work. This may create issues. Lack of respect. The most important thing, sometimes the bosses used to feel themselves like God and oh my God. Sometimes I used to see the issues that have been happening, the humiliation. Respect is the most important thing. Most important. Very few supportive colleagues. If your organization is not having that supportive place, your organization will not work. So it is the, it is the, uh, what should I say that it is the part of the top faculty or the, it's a part of a top management that they must realize this factor. Organization is more concerned toward business. They just need money. They don't think about their employees. Obviously, if employees going to feel that humiliation or employees are going to feel that uh, that my work, my importance, my my uh, dedication, my loyalty towards the organization is not realized. They will obviously leave your. They will turn over. Increase in favoritism. Sometimes we used to find this fact in our turnover issues. Empl employees need uh, pride in where they work and what they do. A little words. The intrinsic motivation we used to teach in the human resource management that little things that yes you have done good yes you are you are going to move in a very, very best way yes uh, you have whatever the efforts you are taking that's good lack of appreciations sometimes just a certificate gives you a great appreciation lack of challenges in job you get bored with your job oh the same things again and again you need new things in your job the job or workplace was not as expected. When you're entering into the in your workplace, you will think that, oh, I'm going to explore so much and my personality will be developed. But with the passage of time, you find yourself, oh, I'm same. There's nothing to learn. It so means like a blank. So this is very important. The mismatch between job and a person. Sometimes we move ahead with this factor that there should be a job rotation. But in job rotation, what mistakes we use, usually used to do that employee is a particular employee is uh, having the particular job or not. This is the most important thing. You must realize. Too little coaching and feedback. We, is, we used to get just one feedback from our boss. What about the feedback from our colleagues? What are the feedbacks uh, from the people around us? Lack of support. Again, the supportive uh, people or the supportive uh, colleagues. Stress from overwork and work-life balance. Oh, ha! Huh. I cannot say this that overwork, work-life imbalances. We have become so much materialistic that all the time we are just working, 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 and we have stopped thinking that our life needs some balances. That's why we are having so many issues in our family as well as at, sometimes in the, at the workplaces. 
loss of trust and confidence in senior leaders. Sometimes because of the favoritism, this has been seen. Less frequency in giving rewards. The people used to say that, okay, in this area, we are not having financial, uh, we haven't earned so much profit, so we are not going to give you the bonus. Oh, the employee will get like this. In the whole year, I get used to get this bonus. Item. We are not going to get this bonus. How they will feel motivated? How they, they want to be in your organization? Effect on organization if its employee leave. Loss of productivity, replacing qualified employees sometimes. Poor retention creates a revolving door. Culture within the organization lowering morale and confidence. Cost of overtime and temporary help. Recruiting cost, interviewing cost. That I have discussed previously, so I'm not going to repeat it over here. Time is spent in orientation. Now, again, that if you want to your employee to be retained in your business, in your organization, how you can attract them, how you can keep them, how you can motivate them. This process has been called as an employee retention in which the employees are encouraged to remain with the organization for the maximum period of time or until the completion of the project. Employee retention is beneficial for the organization as well as the employee. This is the last point where I'm going to stop my presentation because this is the strategy. This, is the, this can be the solution of this problem. And you can only encourage your employees when you know about their emotions. You can... You are spending so much time in your in your organization. If you are not knowing about your employee, if you are knowing, not knowing about the emotions, they won't be retained in your. If you don't know about the feelings, they don't know about the, what they want. They won't be in your organization. And as I've said this, that importance of employee retention is you will reduce the cost of turnover, loss of company knowledge. Interruption of customer service. Turnover leads to more turnover. Goodwill of the company. Regaining the efficiency. Again, it's a fact that how you are managing your company, how you are managing this fact that your organization should move on. You should, there should not be any demoralization. Money may attract people to the front door, but something else is needed to keep them from going out the, the back. There are always the two doors. One comes and one out. You are attracting the people from the money, but you are not respecting them. You don't know about their emotions. You are not emotionally intelligent to deal with them. What will happen? They will get in the back from the another door. They will leave. Obviously, they there will be the factor of turnover. A key is in employee retention where you should be very much keen. That is compensation, environment, growth relationships, support. It costs much more to replace employees than to keep them. It's not always about the money. It's not about an extrinsic motivation. It's not about a salary. It's not about a bonus. It's not about a compensation. There's something much more about that. That is that how much you know about your employees. Major retention factors are Board awareness. The top management should know about, they must know of, and they must be aware of what is, what has been happening in the organization. The executive trust and support, competitive salaries, freedom to act. If, if, if you are having your employees and they want to do something, give them the freedom. Let them what they want. You must know how to manage your, your uh, emotions. You must know how to manage, how to build this relationship of trust among you and your employees. And obviously you will get the best of your, best of your employees. Well, this was the end of my presentation. Thank you so very much. Okay, thank you so much for the wonderful presentation, Dr. Sadia. And for our audience, if you want to ask question, you can raise your hand or you can write in the room chat. Okay, for first question. 
we have the question from audience in the Zoom from Ms. Kaira. What happens when a company has many employers with low AQ, emotional intelligence in the workplace, and only a few people can handle their emotion? How can we be patient with this employee? Thank you. Okay. Uh, it is again a practice. It is again how, first of all, you want to identify what type of an emotions. You have to be very much intellectual in identifying what type of problems they are managing, what, uh, what type of problems they are creating with their emotion. Again, it is not important about the emotions. It is important what problems are being triggered by their emotions. So first identify the problem and then you can manage them. You can build a relationship of trust. You can talk to them. You can train them. You can develop any, any type of strategy. That is uh, depending upon the personality of a person or the personality in which they are creating any problem. Okay, thank you. And the second question from Ms. Fabiana. How do we see her personal problem in life so that just a moment, so that when we work, they don't affect work? Because sometimes I often don't focus in there are a lot of problems, so I focus hard of many people and the work target is finished quickly at the end of the day. Thank you. Um, can you just repeat it once again? I'm right in the room chat. Uh -huh, okay. You can finish, Miss. Okay. Oh. Um. Is this a question that how you can become a more effective leader and unleash the potential in yourself? The second question is from Fabriana. How do we see per personal problem? That's not coming in my chat box. Oh, but Dr. Sadia Kohos. Okay, just repeat it once. Uh, let me understand. How do we see per personal problem in life mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that we so that when we work they don't affect our work because mm -hmm. sometimes I often don't focus in if there are a lot of problems so I focus her of many people and the work target is finished quickly at the end of the day. Okay. Well, what I get from you is that sometimes your personal prob problems get into your workplace and you yeah. won't get give the best performance as you want to perform. And the day ends in, in a very critical way. So the most important thing is that, again, this is what emotional management is. This is what self-management is. How you are managing yourself. It is very difficult. It is very difficult to manage your emotions, to manage your... But with the patience, with the practice, that with this motivation, yes, yes, I can do this. I can change this thing. I can uh, move on. I, it's not the end of the life. So it is important to train yourself, first of all, before training anyone else. So train yourself that, yes, I can do much better than what has been going on. And this will help you a great in your in, in work family balances. What we usually used to do that whatever has been happening in our family, we bring that at the workplace. That this creates a problem. So second point, that if you are having a family issues, make up your mind. When you are coming to the job, you must forget about your family. Uh, it's a bit difficult, but you have to because job and family are two different aspects. Okay, thank you. And the next second, next question from Mr. Faiz. How do you deal with seniority in a work environment when the person doesn't dare to speak up more? How do you make this person confident, Miss? Thank you. Okay. Now, again, uh, to train someone with the trainings and developing their skills, informing them what are their flaws, the feedbacks that whatever has been going on, uh, the feedbacks, 
uh, by giving them that you should work along or uh, people around you. They must give ask them that first listen, first understand what has been asked. Then you can manage all these things. Okay, thank you. And then we have the sixth question again from audience. And the next question from Mr. Echo. Can emotional intelligence be learning? Yes, this question. Thank you. Emotional intelligence uh, is a learning. As I've said that with the passage of time, you can develop it. And things develop when you learn about it, when you understand about it. You get to know about your personality. You get to know about your emotions. You know how what what type of a person you are. This is obviously a learning. Okay, thank you. And then the next question from Miss Dia Rahmi. What key, what kind of the test that suitable for me sure such skin of the intelligence on emotional as the impact toward the tour of an intention. Thank you. Now, see, this is the whole topic today. We have discussed thoroughly that uh, how we can get our impacts of emotional intelligence. If we are emotionally intelligent, we will extract out the problem of our employees. We will, as for example, we got one question now that someone was having the family issues. If the boss is emotionally strong, they are emotionally intelligent. Obviously, they will manage the emotion of their employees they will realize that someone is facing some issues from their family so they will create some relationship with them so through this it it will obviously create create a relationship balancing but if on the other side that lady is facing some family issues and their bosses are not emotionally intelligent to identify their emotions what the lady will do with the passage of time she will take the decisions of turnover she will leave that organization and she will move on to somewhere they, her, her she can be recognized or emotions or emotions can be recognized in a positive way. Okay, thank you for answering. I think it's very clear answer. And then the next question, we have three questions again from our audience. And yeah. the next question from Mr. Kasino Martovi Ngangun. Why the... E Way the IQ between men and women is it possible to make different decision depend on the condition? Thank you. Can you repeat first part of the question? Man and female. Man and the woman is hmm. it possible to make different decision depend on the condition? Thank you. You see, I usually used to say that we don't have the five fingers equal. We are having a different part of every finger. So it is very much important to realize this fact when when a body part of, in, of us is a different, then the people are different. Even one boy is different from the other boy. A male and female are the very different personalities. And the emotions, again, uh, uh, the females, if we move ahead towards the research, you can find that uh, females are sometimes very much emotional, but females are sometimes very very calm, very patient, and they know how to manage the things. So it is, again, they are very different personalities. And uh, again, it is very much important to realize the person. It's not about a gender. It's not about a male or female. It's about that how you are managing the emotion, either that is a female or a male. They, they are human and they can be together at any, any part, any situation. Okay, thank you. And then the next question from Miss Sandra. I think emotional intelligence can be learning by giving sympathy to other beings, could be human being or even animals, should be implemented to our children too. Thank you. Okay, first of all, emotional intelligence is not about sympathy. It's about empathy. It's about how you realize the importance of other people. Even they are uh, humans or even they are uh, animals, it doesn't matter. First of all, make this one thing clear. It's not about a sympathy. It's about the fact that how much uh, you are intelligent to know about the emotions. And this is the beautiful fact she has said that obviously we have to put all these things into our upcoming generation. And, you know, at the, in this technological world, 
the, what the most important thing we are missing that is emotions. So it is the beautiful thing if you can transfer your uh, emotions into the kids and you can make them emotionally intelligent from the very beginning. That's a great thing. Okay, thank you. And then the last question from Mr. Amin Tohari. How you can become a more effective leader and unleash the potential? I'm sorry. How you can become a more effective leader and unleash the potential in yourself and other? And then, do you want to increase your leadership skill? Thank you. Okay. Now, coming with this factor that how you can be an effective leader. As I've said to you, you must have your technical skills. You must be technically uh, intelligent. You must about the cognitive. You must know how to make the strategies. You must know about the problems. First of all, with emotional intelligence. Means if you are good enough in taking the decision in, uh, in making the strategies, but you're not good enough to manage your own emotions, then there's a part you have to work on. First of all. Secondly, uh, if you want to have a potential, uh, you want to... Uh, make yourself more productive, then get a feedbacks from your colleagues, then the feed, get the feedbacks from your friends, ask from them what, what, is, uh, what, what they are feeling that is missing in you. And again, how you can enhance your leadership skills, that is again, practice, practice and practice. If you will make mistakes, some people use today, I want to be the effective, I want to be the perfect leader, but I don't want to make any mistake. You cannot do this thing. Until, unless you're not going to make the mistakes, you can not be a best person. You cannot be a best leader. So to be an effective leader, it is important to learn whatever you are, uh, whatever you are, where you are acting, whatever your actions are. Okay, thank you for answering. I think it's very clear answer from Professor Ra. Before we close this session, let us, let us take a photo together. So everyone, please open your camera. Okay, let's take a picture. I will take a photo on the count of three. One, two, three. Okay, another one. One, two, three. Smile. Thank you for your keen cooperation. Finally, we come to the end of the visit lecture today. We would like to repeat thank to Dr. Sadia Me. Memon, for the excellent information. Thank you for sharing your knowledge. We hope this information will be beneficial for our audience. And I hope we can meet again in another event in the future. Also, sure. I would like to thank for all participants for attending this class and making this class more interesting. At last, we, have, we hope to have more collaboration with University of Science from Pakistan. The visiting lecture for today... And here we hope to see you soon. Thank you. And have a nice day. Maybe from Dr. Sadia, is you will say something before. It's okay. It's, it's, it's a wonderful session. And I really like the way you all have asked the questions. Uh, thank you so very much for everything. And thanks to you for such a great hosting along with everyone, all participants who are remain there. And I, want, I hope that uh, they have learned much more about all these things. Thank you so much. Thank you once again. Thank you so much. And next day, Dr. Sadia. Yeah, thank you so much for participating. You can meet the Zoom for audience. Thank you. Good luck.